Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about a, a piece of software I've been a fan of for a long time. It's called Spine from Esoteric Software. And the reason why we are talking about today is Spine 4 was just released. Now, Spine 4 uh, adds a number of nice new features to the mix, but there's a pretty good chance that you've probably never encountered Spine. So we're going to do a bit of a quick overview of what this guy is all about. And then we'll come back and jump in and take a look at what is new in Spine 4. So Spine itself, probably the easiest way to show you what this program is about is to show you it in action. The cool thing with Spine, there is a fully functioning free trial. You can't export, I don't think. There's some definite saving limitations. But other than that, you can check out all of the features and functionality associated with Spine. And Spine works basically in two modes. You've got your setup phase and you've got your animation phase. And what you're going to find, Spine basically allows you to do 3D style animations using 2D sprites. Uh, so you can see here, this guy is composed. Here's the hierarchy that goes together to make this guy. So we've got uh, all the various different pieces in the world, the ground, the rocks, and so on. So if we zoom out a bit here, you'll see uh, there is a rock in the scene. All these various different things are composed in hierarchy. So the tank here is composed of this hierarchy. And then you here you've got the treads. Like there, you can see all the various different spine control points on those. Those will, conf will handle the... See the, the graphics for the treads here? They're going to handle them going around in a corner. And they'll handle them doing things like going over this bump over here. We've got other control surfaces here, such as the cannon target right there. You'll notice this over here. This will control this bone right here. And using Spline, you can do animations a number of different ways. You can do a traditional bone-based animations. You can also do uh, freeform deformations, which is kind of using a mesh or a lattice to deform things over time. And it allows you to create a number of very cool animation effects. So let's go ahead and see what this hierarchy of uh, stuff does for this tank. So we're going to take it from the setup phase. Oh, I suppose I should explain that first. Uh, when you're setting things up, it's basically a composition of a number of images. So you can see here the tank is made up of the body, the shadow, the gun tower, and so on. And then you see here we've got these images associated with it. And if I highlight over the image, you'll see what the the actual source image was. So there's the shadow, there is the tank top, the gun tower, which I really, as a tank enthusiast, hate the turret being called a gun tower. Uh, but you see all the various pieces that go together. So we got a number of different wheels, all the various different small wheels being used and so on. And then you've got the things that actually control them. So we've got the bone here for handling the uh, cannon in the out of the gun and so on. And so that's how you set your scene up. It basically, it is composed of a number of different sprites. So I can grab any one of these. Let's go into translate mode over here and you'll see it's basically just built up a composition of various different sprite images that go together. And then you do the control um, things such as the bones and the lattices, etc., to go ahead and animate it. So speaking of animation, once we're done, we head on over here to the animation section. And this will give you an idea of what you can do with 2D animations. Let's just zoom that out a little bit and we'll play this demo. All right, so here we go. Here we go. So that is uh, the kind of things that Spine is capable of. And then you can do a number of things. You can create poses, blend between those poses. Uh, you know, this isn't the most complex example, uh, but it, it is probably my favorite. So that's the one I went with. You've got um, a number of graphs that you can use to control animations over time. It is a very uh, robust, mature piece of software. And then when you're done, uh, you can export it out in a number of different ways. You can texture pack out into texture sheets, various different options. Uh, you can create movies, uh, rendering, but most of you will be using JSON or binary output and then using one of their runtimes with a game engine of choice. So then you can have access to all of the, the special functionality that Spine has in your game runtime. So if you wanted to do things like billowing capes, uh, you could keep the, um, the freeform defamations and use them in your game itself. So we'll get into the runtimes in just a second. But let's go back and take a look at what's new in Spine 4.0. Uh, so we've got uh, full control. So the uh, graphing that I was talking about there for handling key changes over time was completely reworked, uh, completely new user interface for that. Uh, there is a new tool in here um, called the Favor tool. Uh, and what this basically does, say you have a keyframe, you've got, um, let's say, an idle and then a, a walk post, and you want to blend between the two. What you can do using the favor tool is kind of slide towards the one that you want. So you want to have it more towards idle or more towards run. Uh, when you're setting up your, your keyframes in between, you can use the favor tool to kind of slide back and forth between the two different keyframes. Should be a nice animation uh, time saver there. 
Uh, we've got also the ability to do animation along the separate axes, so you can key X and Y together, but you can now do the ability to key X and Y separately. So for each animation, you can choose to separate keys of bones X and Y axis for translation, scaling, and shearing. You can also uh, key RGB and alpha for a slot, uh, so that will definitely open some things up. We've also got some new uh, graphical functionality inside of the editor itself, all available in the settings category in the new settings area. Uh, so new smoothing options, including bicubic sampling, anseotropic filtering, nerdy tech terminolo terminology for making it look great. Also now supports color profiles. You've leveling your creative for your monitor of choice, ensuring accurate colors. If your game uses linear color blending, you can now enable the same in spine to see your skeletons exactly as they are in game. Uh, we also got performance improvements in the form of 64-bit versions, so it now uses more memory on a system. Uh, vast, um, vastly improve the efficiency of handling large projects with many thousands of bones, attachments, and timelines. Um, I keep reading this as Polish. Okay, they added Polish. Uh, they added Polish, 100 plus new hotkeys, uh, all sorts of Polish across the boards, just little, little improvements everywhere. And you can now uh, do full rotations over 360 degrees in either axis, which, so between that one and the uh, keying in different axes, it should be a nicer experience for uh, animating things for sure. Uh, and then uh, they've got a new launcher. It allows you to switch between various different versions, make sure that you've got the one you want. You can also turn it off if you so wish. And then we've got some improvements in terms of run times. We'll look at run times in just a second. Now, one of the weird things here is there has been no um, runtime support for the Godot game engine, and it seemed a little shockingly weird there. Uh, but what they're saying is our next version 4.1 will mostly focus on quality of life features. On the runtime side, we'll be adding support for new game toolkits, specifically Godot. Now, interestingly enough, they're also deprecating Lua in ActionScript. Now, Lua seems a little weird, because I don't know if that means default uh, gets hit as well, because Lua is still quite commonly used, so that seems weird. Action script I can see deprecating Lua. Lua seems like a little bit of a premature move there. Uh, so in terms of Spine itself as an overview, what is it all about? What features does it have? Well, it's got a dope sheet for doing animations over timelines. Uh, mesh support, so basically, uh, instead of drawing uh, rectangles, meshes allows you to polygon inside of your images. Uh, we've got graph support for handling um, Interpolation over time, graph, you know, the, how keyframes go over time. Freeform deformations, I mentioned that a few times. Uh, preview of what you're working on, weighting or skinning support there. It's got support for inverse kinematics. Uh, export out to videos and so on. Uh, we've got support for uh, Bezier paths. Uh, importing in JSON and binary format, skinning support, texture packing support, bounding box support, and then a ton of different runtimes. On the topic of runtimes, here are the official runtimes. So we've got Cocos 2D X Objective C, C, Lua. I don't know if that one is being deprecated or not. Uh, Flash, HTML5 Canvas, WebGL, and Embeddable Widgets, LibGDX, which is actually LibGDX, is the library that uh, Spline is written using, by the way. Uh, Love. Uh, again, Lua-based. I'm not sure what that deprecation is going to mean to that one. Model game, SFML, Starling, 3JS, Unreal Engine, Unity, and XNA. And then a number of generic runtimes, including Lua, TypeScript, JavaScript, C Sharp, C++, uh, Objective-C, and ActionScript. Uh, though it does appear like Lua and ActionScript may be going away. Again, Lua seems like a mistake to me, but we shall see. And then there's a number of third-party runtimes out there for pretty much every game engine you can think of, except, weirdly enough, the Godot game engine. Now, Godot does have this kind of functionality built in. Uh, it's got cutout animation tools that kind of do the same sort of thing. So maybe that is why. Uh, but with the next version, you are going to have uh, support for the Godot game engine as well. Uh, in terms of if you want to pick up Spine, uh, you can purchase it for 69 bucks. Uh, includes all the basic features, enables exporting to every supported format. Uh, meshes and other advanced features are not included. So the professional, if you want to have meshes and other advanced features, are there. This one is also limited to under half a million dollars. Uh, so this one gets rid of that limitation. And then we have an enterprise level version and then educational market stuff as well. So you can see the various different features and functionalities out of the box. As I mentioned earlier on, there is a trial version available. I guess I should have mentioned this off the top. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So pretty much every platform is happy. You're going to see a number of features are missing from the, the demo. So you can't save, export, and so on. Uh, so that's going to be your, your big problem. You can't export out. But otherwise, you can play around with all of the features that are available there. So the trial is available for download right here off Windows, Mac, and Linux. So if you want to check out Spine, it's very easy to do so. Uh, it's a nice little program for sure. Uh, it's, it's nice, clean 
clean, streamlined UI. There's nothing really superfluous in here or nothing that really irritates me in the way they have done things. Uh, the only thing I actually found mildly annoying is if you're running this on high DPI, you got to come in here and set UI scaling up. So I've scaled it up to 150 on a 4K monitor. Uh, it's just unfortunately this requires um, a reboot. And that's, that's a pretty minor gripe, but it's a gripe. Uh, so anyways, that is Spine. Uh, Spine 4 was just released. Quite a few nice new features in there. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, I know there are a number of tools out there. There's like Dragon Bones, there's Spine, there's uh, uh, Spriter, there's um, Creature, uh, and so on and so forth. There's a number of these different options out there. I wonder which one you like the best, or do you use this functionality directly in your game engine? I know um, Unity added some of this kind of functionality. Godot has already had it. Uh, Unreal Engine kind of sucks at 2D for the most part. Uh, so are you using the built-in tools over this, or does this look better to you? And are you looking forward to that Godot 4.1 uh, release runtime? Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.